If I see a player where I'm like, he's not paying attention, he's being lazy, I'll literally lock eyes with that dude because, like, I want to make a difference in his life because you learn it over time. Like, I know that's the dude who's probably not going to do what he needs to do, so I'm going to lock in with him. And because you want to capture those people who who may not understand what their the actual variables of what they just walked into. As you can see, when we go, we go hard. We have been all over. You got to see Mexico. You got to see the trip to the Miami Dolphins. And then we came to Vegas. Here in Vegas now for an amazing opportunity to speak at two of Drew Hanlon's Pure Sweat events. Drew Hanlon, brother of mine, he'll be in Puerto Rico speaking. So I wanted to come and have the opportunity to give back and serve the coaches and the trainers that he works with in the basketball space. And you got to be disciplined. You got to continue your work. So already this morning, we attacked our coach to coaches group. So we had our second round of our third class for coach to coaches. We hammered that out. We got the Zoom going. You can see I got this beautiful office set up. We got trial by fire. So we actually recapped with our standard elite mastermind group all the takeaways from Mexico. Because I always believe you got to highlight and hammer things and make sure that the disciplines continue when you have breakthroughs immediately. And then now I'm about to hop on another Zoom with my guy Phil Heath, seven-time Mr. Olympia, to talk about what you'll also see in a future episode, which is us going to Kansas State together for training camp to empower those guys. Phil Heath may be one of the most disciplined human beings to ever walk the face of the earth. Let's keep this ride going. The champ is here. What's happening? The champ is here. <laughs> What's going on with you? Oh, you know, just a little bit of everything. Um, you know how it is, like right before you leave for major trips and stuff just trying to get all of the work done and then some so you don't have to stress you know traveling abroad and shit like that you know so <clears throat> i literally how are you we we literally we were just talking about that that it's like so many people they don't understand that if you don't live in the details and all those things like you'll just you'll never have success like you can't lead other people like you get so sloppy with shit that like yeah. the trip will get messed up, you'll miss something, or really you'll never even have an opportunity to create an opportunity like that because you were fucking sloppy before you even got to the point to have an opportunity like that. It's it's so true, and you know I've been victim of that before. You know where you're just like okay, not recognizing blind spots. That's like the biggest thing, right? Like you like when you talk about uh, you know not falling in love with success and stuff like that. That means that you have to set aside ego and realize, okay, this is a new game, this is a new sales call, this is a new interaction, I need to come fucking prepared. I get it, I've done this a thousand times, but I'm going to treat it like it's my <clears throat> first time. Knowing I've done it a thousand times, but i got to be more intentional is what I'm saying. So yeah. we have this Dubai trip coming up, we have a lot of vendors that we're meeting, a lot of people that have a lot of things to say. We need to stick to the plan. Ain't no lazy like coming in it's like nope we're gonna be early we're gonna fucking look these people in the eye and tell them what the fuck we want <laughs> yeah 100 percent. Otherwise, otherwise you get you get ran over you know you, you lose you lose the other person's interests you know and that's it, it's setting the tone essentially you know you just gotta fucking set the tone man. and how do you do that when you're being lazy walking in the fucking room yeah you, know, you see it like how has it been real quick how how has it been like when you were in Miami working with dolphins? Of course you were able to see like different demeanors of athletes. How, oh, yeah. how was that? Was that something that you had to kind of like Yeah, it's it's so crazy that, people's side? So crazy that you asked that question. So this is my eighth year 
working with the Dolphins. And so what's kind of cool is you develop relationships because they always bring me in to work with the rookie class. But, you know, like Monday night at dinner, you know, I'm with, with one of the veterans that I've worked with for seven years. Then you got another one of the captains that I've been working with for, for three years. And so it's you're going to these dinners where you have these relationships, and those are the guys who, when they have the longevity, they're like you and I. They do what they say they're going to do, and then they do extra. And then you go into the rookie classes, and this is the stuff that blows you away. You're trying to instill in them, driving the intentional focus that you and I know works in a situation like the NFL where nothing is guaranteed to them, bro. And they, so it, it's you. you're like how anybody – could even walk into that situation knowing you really haven't made the roster. And most of those those contracts, they're not guaranteed. Like, they could get cut like this. And to even waver in your belief or discipline when that's the situation, it's crazy. And so I just love to just pour into them. But you'll see some players, and what I like to do, if I see a player who I'm like, he's not paying attention, he's being lazy, I'll literally lock eyes with that dude because, like, I want to make a difference in his life because you learn at, over time. Like I know that's the dude who's probably not going to do what he needs to do, so I'm gonna lock in with him. And because yeah. you want to capture those people who who may not understand what their the actual variables of what they just walked into. Even even for you, there's probably people who are like, man, if I could make it to the Mr. Olympia competition, oh, it'd be a dream. And you're sitting here going, if I'm fucking showing up. I'm coming home with the shit that's behind me on my Zoom screen. Otherwise, I'm not going. When I said I was going to win 10, people thought I was crazy, but I got seven. I'd rather <laughs> say anything. something fucking crazy. It's pretty big. And if it wasn't barring injury, I probably would have won 10. But, you know, that was in God's hands. But it's something to where I believe is transferable, obviously, in athletics. But with business, right? It has to be, right? Like, yeah. you got guys that are dealing with imposter syndrome nonstop of like, oh, I'm just not making some money. Uh, do I, do I, oh man, like, can I do this again? Like, what do you say to those people? It's one of my questions, because I would assume that you deal with people with imposter syndrome, false bravado, especially even in sports, right? Like, you get a guy that, like, oh yeah, like, I was, you know, top in the SEC and this, and I got drafted first round, and, but then, camp hits and they realize like these motherfuckers are really good yeah and i got paid all this money well it, i mean it, it, it's a combination of business and sports i mean that's why i always talk about that seduction of success i mean the people who can say hey like i won't be seduced by this success no matter what the success is you know like you weren't seduced by the first that's why you went for the second it was more of a, let me see how great i can be me being my greatest in your eyes was 10 Right? So that's like the players who say to me, like, I want to be a Hall of Famer. You and I already both know if that's the way that they speak, the way they show up to work is going to be completely different than a guy who says, man, I hope I make the 53. And so the hard part for me is, can you take that person who that's ingrained deep into childhood, that's ingrained somewhere, to where what's causing you to say you only think you're worthy of being on the 53? Like... Do you not see that, like, you were all SEC, you won two national championships? Like, why would you ever allow what comes out of your mouth? Because what comes out of our mouth goes in our ears, and that's what drives our action. Why would you ever say that, knowing that, like, dude, you should be starting on this team, and you're for sure all pro? So let's at least say we're all pro until we get there. You might tell me, hey, I don't think I'm a Hall of Famer. Great. Then at least, like, let's go for all pro. But don't, don't tell me you just want to make the 53 that's where if you fall a little bit short what happens you don't even make the roster whereas to your yeah. point you say 10 and you fall short you hit seven and you're the greatest ever do it so it's 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 somebody has to define what they want Go ahead. we are ready to lock in at pure sweats pro trainer school you know, Drew Hanlon has had such a huge impact on my life. So the opportunity to give back to him and all of these individuals that are attacking their next level is an honor for me. And I would do anything for Drew. We'll probably give you a few little clips. You're not going to get a chance to hear all of what I say, the entire speech. Uh, but if you did, you'd hear some things that I've learned from Drew, the way he attacks the detail. So always remember, there's things that you're going to hear consistently. Intentional focus, finding your edge in the details. 
these coaches are going to hear that today because that's what drives the difference in your continual peak performance. Drew, I appreciate you, brother. performers in the world and the secret for you to become the very best trainer, the very best father, the very best husband, the very best individual you can be and it has nothing to do with a basketball and it's got nothing to do with a hoop. Would that be all right? I want each of you to think about your favorite coach. I want you to think about your favorite teacher. I want you to think about that individual that impacted your life. That individual when you felt, man, I got nothing left in the tank. They were the one that were there to pick you up off that mountain of life to help you realize that you had more within you. Think about that coach for me. Or think about that teacher. Comes in many different forms. So in having this opportunity to spend time with all of you, I wanted to find a story of a leader, a teacher, Every single one of you, your teachers. But one of the great things about our opportunity to learn and get better doesn't mean once we reach a certain age, we figure it out and we know it all. As Rich mentioned, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here with all of you, just because I've been doing this for almost 20 years, just because I've partied on the field after Super Bowls, just because I've won multiple national championships, I'm far from figuring this thing out. I still have two coaches, I'm still reading books every day. I'm trying to figure out how I can be the best that I can be. So why would I not learn from somebody like Drew Hanlon who outside of the game of basketball, believe it or not, and sometimes I don't think he talks about it enough, is the power of what he understands about this. When you remember the sacrifice that somebody's made for you, or the sacrifice you're currently making for somebody, you wake up and you say, I ain't wasting a day. I ain't wasting a day. Just like I'm not gonna waste the opportunity to come here and spend time with all of you and not give you everything that I got. You see, a lot of coaches and speakers that do what I do, they talk about why and purpose. I'm not saying why and purpose is not important. It's not enough. Coaches who talk about why and purpose and who don't go deeper, they don't actually understand the secret of the highest performers. The secret of the highest performers in the world is helping those individuals uncover their burn and the true fire inside of them that ignites their why and purpose every day and causes them to be disciplined on the days they don't want to do it and especially after they win. He says, man, give me one word. If somebody was going to say, he's like, for me, it's unseen hours. Like people know me for unseen hours. If there was a word, how are people going to remember you? And he knew I had been teaching this concept of the burn, which is really something most people don't talk about. They talk about why and purpose, but they hadn't done the research that I've done. I could literally stand up here for a week, two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month, and tell you stories. We could I could do business and sports. I could give you sports stories, guys that are in the Hall of Fame now that I've worked with, where the burn was the secret to their performance. Current athletes, secret is the burn. And so Drew says, it's the burn, man. You can give me all these dissertations, but man, your podcast should be called The Burn. I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. I'm not saying money doesn't matter. I'm not saying I don't want you to grow a business where you can have lots of money. I'm not saying that one day you may not be an NBA coach, an NBA head coach, or an assistant NBA coach, or an assistant coach in college and make a lot of money doing it. But what I'm saying is, if you're solely focused on the money, I'm just going to be honest with you, it's probably going to work out for you at the level in which it could. 
But if you learn to not worry about the money, but you worry about the fire and the heart and the passion of the young individuals you've been given opportunity to make a difference with, I promise you the money will come because I'm living proof of it. You see, God had to see if I was willing in 2011 to say yes to my high school basketball coach to give me the opportunity in 2017 to sit in the GOAT's office and start winning national championships with him. I had to be willing to sacrifice and serve to show God that I was willing to do the work. And if you're making it about the money, you might be waiting a long ass time to figure out how great you can be. Always give it everything you got. Make sure you care enough to live in the details. If you want to build champions, you got to live and behave like a champion. If you want to help somebody work when there's no reason for them to be working, you have to do something that Drew's done, which is to understand this and this with his players. He goes deep with his guys. Drew's no different than me, which is one of the reasons why Drew and I get along so, so well. If you really understand Drew and his players, man, he loves his guys. He's been training Jason Tatum. Jason used to go to the same high school my son goes to, 6 a.m. every single day, never missed a workout. What does that mean? He's been training Jason Tatum since Jason Tatum was 14, 15 years old. So did he sign up for a workout to put it on Instagram to build a resume? Or did he sign up to make a difference in somebody's life? Standard over feelings. Don't allow your feelings to dictate how you show up. When you live to your standard, you'll help lead other people to live to their standard. And find your edge in the details. Some days it may not feel like it, but God has given you everything that you need. You make sure every damn day you dig down deep, take everything that God has given you, and you take it and you pour into other young men and women with the responsibility you've been given to make a difference in their lives. I appreciate this opportunity to be with each and every single one of you. I love Drew, I love Sam, to Kyle and to the entire team. I'm grateful for this opportunity and to Rich. You guys, man, stack those days, never stop believing in you. Long obedience in the same direction, I appreciate you. Come see the GOAT. You don't check into your hotel first. You come to the gym.